This is Chris Biffle with WholeBrainTeaching.com. We're getting ready to start our next program. I'm setting up my screen. It always takes me a few seconds to do that. Setting up my screen for an incredible broadcast tonight. Yes, I know I've said that before, but check it out. Teaching Challenging Kids 101. That's what we're doing tonight. The Secret Powers of Class, yes. That's our subject, my friends. This is the beginning of a seven-part series. We're going to show you the foundations of whole brain teaching. And I'm privileged to be your guide. So if you have questions, please type them in in the text box if you're watching this live. If you're not, my friends, we will show you how to get a copy of these slides at the end of the broadcast. So let's get started. Here we go. Whole Brain Teaching. 50,000 members in 30 foreign countries, my friends. 2 million views on YouTube and TeacherTube. Educators have downloaded over 10 million pages of free ebooks. We are one of the world's most popular education websites. And let's just talk about the wonder of that. Already, the glasses are coming off. Oh, yes, my friends. When the glasses come off, Coach B gets serious. The reason that this has exploded, one, we're addressing the fundamental teaching problem across the world. It's not reading. It's not writing. It's not phonics. It's not language development. It's not math. The fundamental problem is teaching challenging kids. When you can reach the challenging kids, what we found out, you got good stuff for the challenging kids. It works like magic for every other kid. That's one reason. Second reason is we're free. Nothing travels like free. I pity McGraw-Hill. They can't compete with WholeBrainTeaching.com. They can't match our prices. What are they going to do? Got the free materials, and it's fun. Irresistibly fun. So far as I can tell, and I've been a professor of philosophy for many a year, we're the only social reform movement in the history of this weary planet that had a sense of humor. Who can resist the sound of task-focused laughter in our kids' classrooms? Glasses going back on, my friends. Yes. Now, of Whole Brain Teaching's most popular device, which is the Class Yes. Now, here's a word from Birdland. What if someone wants a copy of these slides or professional development credit? That's the sound of my little friend, Biffy Bluebird. And here's the answer. Easy breezy. Details are at the end of the program. That's Booby Bluebird, Bobby Bluebird, some other kind of bluebird name. And we love the voices, don't we, Sandstone? All right, check this out. Check this out. Whole Brain Teaching Overview. I want you to pay attention. We've got three components. Daily techniques, class yes is fundamental to our daily techniques. We're going to cover class yes tonight. Next week, the five classroom rules, then the teach okay, then the school board, hands and eyes, mirror and switch. Seven part series, teaching challenging kids 101. Then we have their year long technique, the scoreboard, practice cards, level three, the guff counter, and so on. We're going to go over those after the seven-part series. And all along, if you've been watching these broadcasts, we focus on basic skills. That is the huge universe, the huge free universe 
of whole brain teaching. 72 views. We are delighted to have everyone on board. Let's look at the big seven. The attention getter is class, yes. The organizer, the five classroom rules. The whole brain activator, teach okay. The motivator, the scoreboard. The focus are hands and eyes. The unifier, mirror, and the involver, switch. Use these daily instruction techniques daily. Let me come back to you and talk a little bit about it. There's only seven techniques here. The more techniques you use, the more engaged your students are going to be. I'm sorry, I got to take off the glasses again. Here's traditional education. You're talking and got to get the kid. You're talking, got to get that kid. You're talking, got to get that kid. And they try to get away. And you talk, it's like this all day long. Or you're pushing on the gas and they're pushing on the brake. You're saying go, 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 and they're saying no, 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 no. Have you done that dance, my friend? Look, we even got 3D. Have you done that dance of go, no? When you use whole brain teaching, you say class, they say yes, boom. You say teach, they say okay, boom. You say bell to bell instruction, 100% student involvement. You know what we call that? Teaching Heaven. Folks, if you have experience in Teaching Heaven, tell us on the forum or type in your comments right now in this live broadcast. All right, let's press forward. Now, here's how you start. Here's a script for you. And don't worry about taking notes. We'll get you a copy of all these slides at the end of the broadcast. The teacher says, when I say class, you say yes. Then pause. Class. The students say, yes. They do, automatically. However I say class, you say yes. Class, class. Yes, yes. Classity, classity. Yesity, yesity. We even heard a new one the other day. Check this out. Class a doodle do. If you like that, class a doodle do. Try it. What are they going to say? They will say, yes, a doodle do. You say something, you got their attention, boom. Student engagement. That's our goal. Sandstone, they do love the class yes and all the little variations. Beth B, good to have you online. Now from Bluebird Planet, I've got the one voice down of Biffy Bluebird. Why is class yes important? Thank you, Biffy Bluebird. His big brother, Bobby Bluebird, says, Class yes gives the teacher a simple entertaining technique to gain students' attention over and over again. You can't teach until your students are listening. Yeah, I like that better. I like the high squeaky voice for Biffy Bluebird. Why is class yes important? And his big brother, Bobby Bluebird, he sounds much more mature. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with that. They do love mind soccer. All right, now, let's get down into the nitty gritty of the secret powers of class yes. First of all, variation. Use a high pitch, a low pitch. Silly voice, serious voice. Change your pitch. Say it fast, class. Say it slow, class. Repeat it once, repeat it many times. Use gestures, small or big ones. You can even do this, look. If you say, class, they're going to say, yes. If you say, class, they're going to say, yes. I'll tell you why they will in just a second. Let's go back to that screen. Core knowledge. This is very important. This is advanced. Instead of saying, class, 
You say 4 times 4, they say 4 times 4 is 16. Or you say capital of California, they say capital of California is Sacramento. Or you say top number in a fraction, they say numerator. So, my friends, help me out here online. Tell me some core knowledge call and response that you could use as variation on the class yes. Variation is very, here's a fancy word, neurologically important. I'm going to tell you the story of the sea slug. The sea slug is an animal who has a very simple nervous system. I'm going to get the sea slug over here on camera. There's that sea slug. Simple nervous system. Scientists use the sea slug to st study the nervous system. Now it turns out if you turn a sea slug over and you poke the sea slug with a probe, the first time the sea slug goes like this. Let you poke it. So stimulation result, stimulation result, eventually the same stimulation gives you no result. Have you been there, my dear teachers? It's called, the technical term is habituation. You've got a technique that works like wonders in September and in October is dead wood. Habituation. That's why I'm telling you all along, use our system in the little steps that we're urging you to use it so that you keep introducing Go back to the screen and see if you're reading me with this habituation. It's a long year. You've got to use variety. Yes, my friends. Rich, we will tell you how the scoreboard works in another broadcast or someone may come on tonight and help you out with the scoreboard. Excellent, excellent questions and comments, my friends. Let's look at our next slide. Class Yes strategy. Use them to start a lesson, interrupt a class activity, reduce the hubbub for crowd control before entering class. Tell us, my friends, what is your favorite way to use the class yes. Because here is another aspect of the secret power of class yes. Look at this pattern. The red box is the teacher. I guess that's kind of a, a, a purplish mauve circle is the students. You start by saying class, they say yes. You speak briefly that's your micro lesson. If your kids are tuning out, you're talking too long. That's the solution to that right there. Because kids have short-term memories. But so do we. Just that we can hide it better than kids. So speak briefly, clap twice and say teach. And then the students teach each other what you just said. That is the basic teach okay, class yes pattern. Yeah, and, and saying, shh, stop, listen to me. If you're doing teaching right with a whole brain pattern, they're too busy either listening to you or teaching each other, especially when you amp it up with the scoreboard. Let's look at the second aspect of the pattern. Now, you've got the class yes down. The clap twice and say teach. That's the teach okay, my friends. Then walk around the room checking comprehension and then start over. This is huge. To do whole brain teaching, here you are. You're in the front of the classroom. Here your kids are. You say class, they say yes. You teach briefly. 
You clap twice and say teach. They start teaching each other. Then walk around and listen to what they're saying. You know the kids whose desk to go to first. I'm not saying go to the smartest kid. I'm saying go to your three borderline kids, the kids who could get it, but sometimes they don't get it. Listen to what they're saying to each other. And, of course, you have each of your borderline kids paired up with a good, strong student. But listen, go to the borderline area of your classroom. Listen to what they're saying. If they've got it, go on. If they don't got it, then reteach it. But walk around the class. No, that doesn't work, because they know how to fake you out with their faces. And never say this. How many times have you done this? Any questions? Oh, there's no questions, so they must understand. No. Explain some stuff, have them teach it to each other, and if you hear that they're explaining it right, that's your comprehension evaluation. That's your assessment. All right. Let's press on to our next screen. This is pattern three. Add some gestures. And then students teach each other over and over with gestures. Why are gestures important? Why are gestures important? Because the motor cortex is important. Kids can't tune out if they're making gestures and teaching their neighbors. You're showing some gestures as you talk to them about the numerator and the denominator or about the sentence that is a complete message or about verbs that are action words. You're showing the gestures that illustrate what you're saying. They're using the gestures with their neighbors. They can't tune out. You're getting their whole brain involved. And here's the power of gestures. The single most potent area for memory of the brain is the motor cortex. That's why you can do things without thinking like texting, because it's in the motor cortex. You don't have to think. It's in the motor cortex. Put information in the motor cortex. And when you listen, this is huge. Again, I'm sorry. I'm just too excited. When the information goes into the motor cortex, how does it get there? Through the eyes. The visual cortex is the largest brain area. In fact, scientists say you could call it the seeing brain. So you get the most powerful area, motor cortex involved with gestures, and the visual cortex, the largest brain area, as soon as you get them looking and watching gestures. Text them in. Here is Miss Berger. Miss Berger, welcome to our virtual classroom. How do I use class yes in my lesson plans? Now this is Bobby Bluebird. Don't be afraid. I'll help you. You see, Bobby's a very, very mature Bluebird. Here's how you do lesson planning with. You know what? Let me show you that screen. There's Mrs. Linenthal. Um, check that. Miss Berger. How do I use class yes in my lesson plans? Don't be afraid. I'll help you. Isn't that so much better when you get the visual cortex involved in seeing what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll pretend like I made that mistake on purpose. Give me a ten-finger woo. All right, here we go. Lesson planning. This is a whole seminar we'll do one of these days online. But here's a simple one. Look at me, my friends, and pay attention. Make a bunch of boxes. In the left-hand box, you're just going to put, say class. Put that in your left-hand box so you remember what to say. In the middle box, a small middle box. That's your micro lec lecture. And then put clap twice and say teach. There's your automatic script. If you can't fit everything you want to say into the little box, you're saying too much. Does that make sense? Short-term memory. How long can kids remember something? 15 to 20 seconds. 
Oh yeah, my friends. Now here is one of our favorite guests, Mr. J.J. Jive. But what about the rowdy clicks, man? What about those rowdy clicks? Jay Jive, I'm so glad you're here tonight, and I just love to help you out because you are the coolest of the cool dudes. I'm going to help you with the rowdy clicks, my friends. We told you tonight, my friends, listen, we told you tonight was going to be an incredible night. Look at all the stuff we've covered. Now we're on to rowdy clicks. Here's California clear to all of us. All right. Let's talk about the rowdy clicks. Here's my screen. Here's the bluebirds. Now we've got three of them. I've got to fast think up a name for that third one. Rowdy clicks are one of teaching's toughest problems. We'll spend a whole webinar on rowdy clicks. Just don't know what to do about that third bluebird, but I've got Bobby Bluebird down. Mature voice. Here's how to start with class yes. Just imagine that, my friends, that we can address the problem of rowdy clicks with the class yes. And check out the exciting graphics. Here we go. Get ready for the exciting graphics. Boom! How do you like that? Hip, hip, hooray. Glad to have you online. Rowdy clicks. Here's some advice. We'll have a whole seminar on rowdy clicks, my friends, but they're a problem. First of all, split the rowdies and salt them through your loyalist groups. Don't let your rowdies sit together. Of course you're going to do that. Use a funny tone of voice. Rowdies love silly. So, you know what? If you've been saying class yes, class yes, class yes, and one time you go, class, those rowdies, they're so rowdy, they're going to say, yes, like they think they're getting over on you, but my friends, they're following your directions. Oh, the beauty of that. They're responding with yes when you said class. So yeah, use those silly voices. Now, use raise me class. This is one that I haven't thought about for a while. It was so fantastic in college. Let me explain to you how raise me goes. You say, if I say raise me and then class, you've got to be louder. They love to be louder. Go over to the scoreboard. Say, all right, now, whenever I say raise me class, you've got to be louder and you've got to be faster. Do they want to be loud? Oh, yeah, that's what makes them rowdy. But now they're being loud inside your system. There's a difference between being loud and wacky and being loud. Uh, Remember, it worked like a charm with my college students. And I'll bet it'll work with any students. All right. Stand next to the weakest rowdy when you say class. Think about your rowdies. It's like a totem pole. There's one kid in that rowdy group that everybody pecks on. Stand next to that kid and say class. He'll come back with a yes. Use the birthday game to find the most popular loyal student to be the class leader. All right. Huge point, my friends. I'm going to slow down. The birthday game is incredible. Here's what you do. You tell your kids, everybody, here's a piece of paper. On the piece of paper, write down the names of the three kids in this classroom that you would invite to your birthday party. You say, well, maybe we'll do a writing assignment about this later. So then you collect the papers. Now, every kid has said the names of the three kids they would invite to their birthday party. You put those names down without telling the kids on a piece of paper. And so here's Joan. And if Rudy would invite Joan to his birthday party, make an arrow from Rudy to Joan. If Joan would invite David as leaders, 
That is a way to see beneath the surface, to see the hidden social structure of your class. Now, you know the kids that really are getting the most attention, that everybody wants to have at their birthday party. Pull those kids aside, do some training with them, show them how to do the class, show them how to do the yes, tell them that you see some real powerful leadership potential in them, and if you get those leadership kids on point with that class yes, it'll go a long way in turning the rowdies around. In fact, some of those rowdies are ways to do that. That birthday game though is very, very powerful. After you have a talking relationship with a rowdy, take her aside and see if she's interested in leadership. Yes. You've got to be able to have conversations with a child before you move them to leadership. And just to lighten the classroom atmosphere, try calling your kids my friends. Andrea Schindler, a kindergarten teacher, uses that. And if you just say my friends, my friends this, my friends that, it really creates a pleasant atmosphere. You know what, my friends, if you're overwhelmed trying to read and listen at the same time, I will send you a copy of these slides at the end of the broadcast. And you can always re-watch re, re it. All right. Next slide. Why should we use Class Yes? One, it is quicker. I'm going to come down here with my screen a little bit. It's quicker than one, two, three eyes on me and other attention getters. Listen, I've heard of some wacky attention getters. Like, there's one where you're supposed to stand there and flip a light on and off. Have you heard about the light on and off? Or you got a red light and a green light? I heard about a classroom, they flipped the lights off and the kids started throwing stuff at the teacher. Yeah! Or I heard another one, like you you raise your hand like this, you just hold your hand up, and then the kids are supposed to hold their hand up to show that they're stopped talking. Who's got time for that? You say class, they say yes, and let's get on with business. Oh yeah, my friends. So it's quicker than other attention getters. Um... Students saying yes amplifies the teacher's request for attention. So you say class, everyone else says yes, and a couple of people who are doing something else, they hear the yes. You get a lot of variety. We've indicated that. Changing tones of voice, changing cadence, make the class yes entertaining. And I just got to say there's something magic about it. You, we've heard stories of entire lunchrooms being quieted with a couple of class yeses. Something wondrous is turned on in students' brains if they're, as if they're programming themselves to receive instruction. A little story about the origin of class, yes. Initially, I said, if I say class, you say what? So I say class. They, after a while, they're going, what? What? Yeah, what was not a good idea? But yes is an acquiescence. Yes is an affirmation. Class? Yes. Boom. They're ready to listen to you. Want some ice cream? Yes. That's what the class yes is like. It just gets them ready to receive. And it is our most powerful teaching device. One word here. This is important. I don't have it in the slides. When you say class and they say yes, you're probably going to have to say it about two to three times. That's normal. You say class, they say yes. You get half of them. Get them back. If you don't get them back, go to the scoreboard. The techniques work together. Back to our screen. You know, folks, we've got even more goodies for you here with the class yes. Leadership training. Select several daily leaders. Train the leaders when tapped or pointed at that they should stand up and give their class variation and then use the leaders as needed. Rowdy kids, challenging kids, 
Why is a kid rowdy and challenging? Many reasons, but one reason is they got leadership wired into their DNA. They're going to lead one way or another. They feed off of the attention, and they're going to feed themselves attention one way or another. So make those kids some daily leaders. You take the kid aside and say, you know what? When I point at you, I want to hear you say class nice and loud. When I point at you, I want you to stand up and say class nice and loud. You don't use that kid every single time, but use him as a daily leader, and it builds leadership. It makes that class more unified. And use that birthday game to find out who should be your class yes leaders. So here's the summary. And we're not done tonight, my friends, because I am going to show you, if I get the proper amount of pleading, I'm going to show you some advanced previews. Oh, I, I'm going to get your attention right now. Brand new download. No one's ever seen it. Super speed grammar. We showed a few screenshots last week. If you guys are giving me the proper amount of adulation, oh yes. At a certain point, I may show you some more screenshots of super speed grammar. Square root to teach, I know. But just hold on a second. I'm not ready. I'm not ready for the pleading to begin. I'll let you know. Now, summary. How are we going to bring this all together? You introduce the class, yes. When I say class, I showed you that. Practice variations in pitch, speed, repetitions, and core knowledge. Use it in or out of class to gain students' attention. And for leadership training, transfer responsibility to selected students. Now here's Mrs. Linenthal. Gosh, class yes sounds great, but how could I get a professional development credit for this broadcast and a copy of these slides? Ms. Linenthal, have you had a cold or what is going on? Actually, my cold has gotten a lot better. My, my voice was a little hoarse before, but now I'm almost in singing tune. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. Thanks for your concern, Coach B. That's Mrs. Linenthal. Well, how could you get a copy of these slides? That's the burning question because so much has been covered. Look at the screen, my friends. I'm going to take a drink of California Clear. <coughs> Professional Development Credit. Go to WholeBrainTeaching.com. Click on the PayPal button and donate $5.14 because 514 is a code number for this program. Before long, sometimes within minutes, you'll get an email with a professional development certificate and a PDF copy of these slides. Here's the PDF copy you can use for professional development credit. And it's got two sides. You put your name on that side. You put some information on that side. And if your school district is interested in continuing education and professional development, we are happy to oblige. Now, any questions that we have about the class? Yes, I think Budsley and others have, have pretty well handled those. I am getting ready, however, to just think about, I'm just thinking about it now. I feel like it's a pretty good group tonight. Fonda Jones, what was what is our maximum viewership tonight? Can you give me a count on that, Fonda Jones? Um, I'm thinking about showing you some of the super speed grammar. I showed a little bit last week. This is a huge new PowerPoint program that addresses what I believe is the second toughest instructional problem in elementary education, teaching grammar. Maybe it's the toughest. It's right up there with teaching fractions. 139 tonight. That's incredible. Let me tell you what, 139 tonight. After this broadcast is over, if you will give you a copy of the PDF slides. Lightning fast 
tonight if you're listening live. Do you like lightning fast? I think you do. Anyway, um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this. We're going to look at this super speed grammar. Now let the pleading begin. Are you too adult to beg? Are you too grown up to grovel? Do you want to see the free stuff? Shots. Woo! Here it comes. Oh, yeah, I'm seeing it. Yes, it's pouring down. I feel it, my friends. Yes, smelt lot of even in Russia they want to see it. Well, you know, enough of that. Enough of that. Let's just bring it on up. Look here. Look at the screen. What I did last week was I showed you the noun portion of this. The noun portion. Let me get my screen set up here just right. I showed you the noun portion. And so imagine we've gone through the program and I've shown you all about nouns. Here's the sequence on verbs. But before I get started, let me just tell you about this. Let me just tell you about this. Super speed grammar covers nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, prepositional phrases, and articles. And it doesn't just cover them, it teaches it. Use the PowerPoint, and the PowerPoint's going to teach it to your class, and the PowerPoint is used over 400 slides, enough here maybe for 10 minutes of instruction. No, actually, it's probably six minutes worth in this single PowerPoint program. Let's look at the verbs. Let's get with it. I just love you, my wonderful teaching colleagues. Here we go. So we start with Biffy Bluebird, what's a verb? I'll go fast. I want you to get the feel of this whole unit. A verb is an action word. Now, my friends, I know a verb is also a state of being, but let's just get simple at the start. A verb is an action word or a state of being. But for now, let's just think about a verb as an action word. All right? Now, watch how this unfolds. Boom. Check out the graphic. Do you see right away? That grammar with a graphic is so stinking much more engaging than just the grammar. Yes, it is. The fox smiles. Smiles is the verb that describes the action of fox. The bear climbs. Climbs is the verb that describes the action of the bear. The duck floats. Floats is the verb that describes the action of the duck. You get it? Let's give them lots of examples. Lots of examples. The river flows. The sun shines. The kids can't have too many examples. The trees grow. And then, boom! Stop and tell your neighbor. This is what's so exciting to me about this. Tell your neighbor all about verbs. Do you see what's happening? And I just thought this up yesterday. Let's build the teach your neighbor component into the PowerPoint program. Doesn't that make sense? If we're whole brain teaching and we're all about teaching your neighbors, shouldn't we be making programs that have kids teach each other? Duh! I'm saying that to myself. I just got that the other day. For ELL, English language learners, it's wonderful. Let's go back. Now, more examples. Kids can't have too many examples. The pig smiles, but a new graphic. The sheep chews, the clouds drift, the cow thinks, the bird sits, the barn stands, and boom! Tell your neighbors some words that are verbs. You see this is slowly, slowly building. You see how it builds, my friends. All right. The bear climbs. Now, what is the verb that describes the action of the bear? Let's just stop for a second. You see the power of this. First, we give them lots of examples of verbs. Teach your neighbor. Lots more examples of verbs. Tell your neighbor some verbs. 
Now, let's give them some simple sentences. Identify the verb. Baby, baby, baby steps, but highly graphic. Oh, yeah. And free. Yeah, I said free. Come on, let's go back to the screen. You'll see how small and visually incremental this whole thing is. The boar sees. The branches grow. What's the verb that describes the action of the duck? Quack! The cow looks. The pig grins. See? Make it so easy they can't miss. The bird sings. The hippo wades, a new graphic. The snake crawls. Kids love to get spooked out by snakes. The sun shines. The giraffe speaks. Hi! Lots of simple questions just to identify the verb. The lion laughs. Ha ha. Now, back. Tell your neighbor about verbs and give him or her some great examples of verbs. You know what? Get them to teach each other. Now let's go a teeny step higher on the scaffold. Fill in a verb, an action word. The bear, verb. The seal, verb. The penguin, verb. The water, verb. Now, the noun and the verb, because I taught noun yesterday with the same program. You see this. The car verb, the dog verb, and so on and so forth. So now they're substituting their own verbs. The boy verb, and more and more. I'm skipping through slides. Now tell your neighbor all about verbs and oh no, all about nouns. Come back to me, come back to me, come back to me. So what we're doing is, we did the whole nouns things that you didn't see last week. Now we're doing the whole verbs thing. Now verbs and nouns. And then when we go to adjectives, it's adjectives, verbs, and nouns. Scaffold, scaffold, scaffold. Now check it out. Almost done with the verb unit. The snake hisses. What is the noun and the verb? The sun shines. What's the noun and the verb? Lots of little tasks like that. A new graphic. Lots of little tasks like that. Another graphic. What's the noun and the verb? And I'm getting down to what we call the big summary. Answer these questions with your neighbor. What's a noun and a verb? And now, my friends, the big hairy test. Aye, says Biffy Bluebird. Here's the big hairy test. Now, we've been asking them to just make one substitution. Boom. The noun verb. Fill in a noun and a verb as many times as you can. Do you see that? Multiple substitutions of nouns and verbs. Another picture, same task. Another picture, same task. Another picture, same task. Another picture, same task. This is the big hairy test. The noun verb and the noun verb, oh, even harder. Now get ready. Get ready, my friends. You're going to have to pay attention now. I should have told you, please be sitting down. Because now we're going to have the graphic beyond all graphics. We're at the end of the verb unit. We got to have a high impact graphic here to nail this thing down. Check this out. Check it out, my friends. It's the genius challenge. Look at all those animals on there. I see a noun. How many times can you complete this sentence? Look, there's a bird. There's a ladybug. There's a duck. There's a horse. There's a pig. There's a cow with a milk bottle with a little birdie on his head. There's an owl. But that's not all. Here's the next genius challenge. Boom! Check that out, my friends. I see a noun and a verb. How many times can you complete this sentence? You see the power of the graphic. That's the whole verb unit. And it ends up with kids being able to identify nouns and verbs and create nouns and verbs. Now check it out. If I follow this same system with nouns, verbs, adjectives, articles, adverbs, prepositions, and prepositional phrases, where is it going to end? I'm going to show you just because I'm loving this group tonight so much. Here's where it ends. Look at that. 
article, adjective, noun, verb, adverb, prepositional phrase, how many times can you complete this sentence? That's the extra big giant genius challenge at the end of the whole grammar program. And here's another one, same task, article, the brown cow eats slowly near the barn. That's article, adjective, noun, verb, adverb, prepositional phrase. That is the power of super speed grammar. That's what's coming along to you before too many more days. And my friends, I just want you to know that tonight, if you go online to wholebrainteaching.com, Let's go online to wholebrainteaching.com right now, my friends. Go online. And if you go to, I'll take you right there right now, my friends. If you go to PayPal and you want a copy, a PDF copy of the slides, including the fancy blue professional development certificate. If that's what you want, then just go here to PayPal. See that right there? Right here. Type in $5.14 and I'm on it tonight, my friends. I will check my email in an hour and I will have those PDF slides back to you tonight. Lightning fast. I'd love to see you in Florida on Feb. February 25th or in Indio on March 17th. We've got some more programs coming up. My friends, I'm retired now. As you can tell, I'm just cranking this stuff out. You want me to come to your school or district? Do you? Send me an email. Send me an email at chrisbiffle at wholebrainteaching.com. Let me see if I can bring that up for you. Let's get that email address here. Lickety split. Chris Biffle at wholebrainteaching.com. I'm looking around for where that might happen to be here. I'm checking it out. And here it is. So easy. Now, folks, go to wholebrainteaching.com, download the freebies, start with the first steps menu, and Fonda Jones, how many viewers did we have tonight? Or Nancy Stoltenberg, glad to have you online. How many viewers did we have tonight? Love to come to your school. Next week, you know what we're doing next week? Let me tell you. Next week, we're going to do the five classroom rules. Yes. What are we doing? The program, the series is called Teaching Challenging Kids 101, a seven-part series. So you got the class yes tonight. Come back next Tuesday night and bring some friends. And we'll do the five classroom rules. And then we'll add the other ones week after week. Any questions for us, my friends? Fonda Jones, thank you so much. Busley, thank you. Louisiana needs you to come real bad. Let me tell you about Louisiana. We have given a national conference there three years in a row. Send an email to Louisiana College and say, you know what? Let's have those guys back again because maybe Louisiana needs some more whole brain teaching. The uh, conference will be in Lakeland, Florida. Uh, we will be in Ohio this summer at Canton, Ohio. Any other questions? Louisiana Tech, give me an invitation from Louisiana Tech. Uh, I will be in Pittsburgh. 
I will be in uh, in York, Pennsylvania. Their questions, post them on the, f the forum. We will be in Bakersfield. That's near Santa Clarita. That will be in a, a month or so. You sign up for Florida by going to wholebrainteaching.com and go to the calendar. North Carolina, don't have anything coming up in North Carolina. We'll be in New Jersey. In about a month, we'll have to get these things up on the calendar for you. At Templeton Elementary in New Jersey. Look that up. Canada? Get me an invitation to Saskatchewan. Any other questions? Anything in the middle? Up in Union, Missouri which is about 40 minutes outside of St. Louis. And in the Midwest again, Canton. We were just in Kansas City. I'm afraid you missed us. Tennessee, we do have something coming up in Kentucky. I can see that, you know what? Coach B needs to stop. You want me to stop working on super speed grammar and put these things up on the calendar? Maybe I should do that. All right, my friends. This is what we love to say. Great broadcast tonight. I want to see you guys all next week. Bring some friends, 140 viewers. That's fantastic. So this is what we get to say because I'm in my house and no administrator can. Profession. See you all next week. Stay online and keep talking.